Hey there guys, I'm Manacle. Welcome to another episode of my salty playthrough of Darkest Dungeon. Now, after the last time, I finally killed my first boss. I killed the Swine Prince, which was actually not as hard as I remembered him to be. Although I think the Swine Prince is one of the easiest. And we also killed, I also was able to kill a new boss, a new side boss, called the side, a mini boss, um, called the Collector. I actually never encountered that thing before, but I did some uh, like wiki reading on it, and it's a new added uh, roaming boss, a boss that appears in random areas, it, that has a random chance to appear in areas, in um, every area, that has a 5% chance to appear and attack you when you have over 65% of your bugs full during a dungeon. So it's actually a fun boss mechanic, the collector is fun, because he has a 5% chance to appear um, and attack you in, if you're in a dungeon, only if you are over, well, over burden, only if you have over 65% of your, at least it said 65% of your bugs full. So it's basically a boss that waits for you to be, to have a lot of loot, and then he attacks you. I guess that's why he's the collector, right? But anyways, we did some nice, nice work there, so I'm quite happy. Now I would like to do the, um, what's his name? I would like to do, oh, uh, this is not, not that get good. I would like to do the Necromancer, so the Ruins boss. So we'll go right there in a moment. I'm just checking we got any lazy I know you. Wow. Mine, this, like, look, this is why you don't hire anyone. This is probably the worst Houndmaster you could ever get. Minus 3% crit chance for range skills when he has only range abilities except one melee and minus 5 accuracy range skills uh, with lazy eye. So minus 3% crit for range skills and minus 5 accuracy for range skills. Terrible character. Terrible character. Um, okay, but since we, we did what we wanted, let me see. I upgraded this. Great. I upgraded this, I think, also. No, we still need some to upgrade here, but I can now upgrade the, uh, the guild. Every has a weakness. The wise hero trains for what you will face. Yeah, the wise hero trains for what you will face. Exactly. Exactly. So, I will be taking this character, I think. If I remember correctly, this is my second Hellion. Uh, she is going to be good for fighting the Necromancer because the Necromancer is going to move to the back row, so she's going to be good for that. And, excuse me, she's going to be good because she has plus 15% damage in Ruins. So, it's going to be a very, very good character for that, if you ask me. Um, okay, so we will keep uh, take her, definitely. Let me just see if she, has, if she needs any abilities here. Yes, she does. She needs this, and she needs... Actually, that's all. That's all she needs. Okay. And now, the second. Second character that I want... Ah, oh, that's, that's gonna be tricky, because usually it's a good idea to take a Crusader. Crusaders are good against, in, in the ruins overall, because they have, because they have uh, plus 15% damage versus unholy, so they are overall good to fight in the ruins, but I don't know, man, the, the, um, the highwayman or the... The man, uh, the man at arm are just so much better because of the buff that they have, like plus, you know, plus three dodge, plus, uh, plus ten dodge, plus three percent crit for all party members, plus fi five dodge, right, plus ten percent damage and plus five percent crit for all party members. That's a lot of buffs that you get from him. Okay, let's let's try to set up a party, um, and we'll see what we'll. Will do. I know I'll take you. You got the fits though. Shit, I didn't notice she's got this. Uh, that's that's bad. That's actually bad. She has that. I didn't notice she has that. Uh, that's yeah, that's a big problem. So I guess we're not gonna be going there. I was really planning to go for the boss, but maybe let's just do a short run. And then go for a boss, maybe. I don't want to do the hug yet. I, I don't want to do the hug now. So maybe let's go for a short run somewhere. 
and go for the boss afterwards. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the idea we can use definitely. So let's take a highwayman. Let's take a hellion. Uh, okay, let's take a beastmaster, a houndmaster, not beastmaster. Oh, you also are sick. Well, shit. So let's take a... Yeah, you. A, a Grave Robber. I like Grave Robbers. I, I think it's a fun class. Grave Robbers are a fun class, in, in my opinion. And let's take a... Secondary Crusader, I guess? Yeah. But before we enter, before we go there, let me... Heal up someone, so who do we need to heal? You got a lot of sickness, but it, they aren't the most important uh, to get rid of. But you, you have the fits, which basically makes you useless. So let's let's take you in that case. Let's get you well. Okay, so let's go on a short one. Uh, like usually, I would take only eight food. But you know that I sometimes get unlucky with RNG, so I don't, don't want that to happen. I don't want to get an increased amount of stress just from being unlucky, so yeah, this is gonna be enough, I think. Hopefully, I will do it fast enough so I can do a boss fight afterwards. If not, I'll just divide this episode some in some other way than usually Pace out the halls of your lineage okay this is familiar. not a good setup now, but let's let's hope this is gonna be fast let's hope this is gonna be fast in terms of the um the necromancer the necromancer is a kind of generic boss where he um starts off in the first position and he sa starts summoning enemies to you. It's basically, actually if I think about it right now, the, ne the Necromancer is very similar in his design to um, to the Collector actually. If you guys watched the last episode, the Necromancer really works in a very similar way to the Collector, where he basically, like I said, starts in the first position and then he summons more and more enemies and um, in, in the first three, three rows and you basically have to deal with it, right? So it's it's a very very similar boss to that guy, very similar. <coughs> uh, okay, As nice. We got a crit. Just to have increased a bit. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. One HP off, crap. One HP off! Come on, game. Come on. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. You will not allow me to heal, will you? Oh yeah, I cannot do that. So let's just light you. Let's heal him. Crit for six. Nice. We are full HP again. Now let's just kill you. Press this advantage. Crit again. Nice. Give them no quarter. We had minus ten Success damage so from a quirk somewhere. Uh, or is it merely? If touch below seventy-five. Uh, okay. Didn't notice that. Okay, let's open this. Hopefully. We didn't get too much, so that sucks. Come on, move, move, move. Today I started playing some XCOM again, uh, XCOM Long War, uh, to be precise. And holy fuck, I am very getting very lucky, I would say, in in Darkest Dungeon overall compared to XCOM. Really, like the the amount of bullshit RNG that I'm getting in XCOM compared to Darkest Dungeon is. Darkest Dungeon is basically going very, very, extremely well, I would even say, compared to 
uh, to XCOM. Like it, it really compared to XCOM, my uh, Darker Dungeon campaign is, is going extremely well so far. You didn't even kill him. Really? You have two speed. This guy has five and you are going fast. The Fucking standard game. Fucking broken. standard. Maintain the offensive. Fucking standard. Two versus and you're gonna pull me again, won't you? Yep. Again. Again. To a killer. I think I said it too early that I'm, I'm doing well because this is starting to be bullshit again. Why you hate me so much? Why do you hate me so much? Fuck you. Of course I heal for one. Because 1 HP off? No, 3 HP off. Okay, I thought 1 HP off, but no. Okay, at least we resisted, that's good. Heal for 1 again instead of 2. Because that would be too nice. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Like I said, always take holy water in the ruins, so you may get a nice... Like, that was 2,000 gold. Almost 2,000 gold in just one uh, one item. And it costs you 250, right? So it's it's very, very, very useful to take holy water, at least one, uh, one holy water with you on, on those dungeons. Uh, we need to heal. Even though he's gonna attack now because of that. Stra stress is okay for this guy. Damage is not okay. Come on, stop fucking healing for one! Three times in a row! Like, that's 50-50, but I, I never understand. Is it that the game rolls the heal for everyone the same or is it every ca if like if it's a AOE heal on six on four characters and it's 50% on all of them how unlucky it is to get 50% rolls on the lower one so many times in a row I I don't know how the game calculates that like is it is, is does it roll for everyone and depending on what you get everyone gets it because I know that sometimes I had crit, crit heals on one character and not a crit heal on another character. So, I, I don't know how it actually calculates. I just don't, don't understand how it calculates AOE heals. And of course he had to go next because I couldn't use a heal on, on my friend. So, of course, of course. 
two for four. Okay, I'll use the bandage on you. Ah, <sighs> and fucking G. Ah, and fucking G. Oh, come on! Fucking spider surprised me. Because he dodged. You know you have less speed than my highwayman, right? You know you have fucking less speed than him. And you dodged again. At least I can heal. Fuck you. Why, why did it not decrease stress on this guy? Why? God! The... I really, really need to find some kind of mod to show me the fucking uh, battle log of this game. Just show me the fucking log. I want to see the roles. I want to see why and, and the mechanics. Why, like, when you crit, it decreases stress for your whole team. Except, it doesn't decrease it for your whole team all the time. Sometimes it decreases on, like, three characters. And you may say, well, Monarchal. It's obvious, you decrease the characters that are standing close to him. No, it's do it doesn't, because he was standing here, and, it, and he was standing in the last row, or here, and it decreased the, his stress level, the second character, and the last character, but ignored him. Right? So, he was here, and it decreased the stress, and he critted the enemy, and it, and the, it decreased the stress for him, for him, for her, and he got ignored. What, what's the what's the deal with that? Like, explain the mechanics to me, because some of the mechanics in this game are so vague and so weird and so arbitrary. Like, God, it's just frustrating. Really, it is. Because I don't I don't know what will happen, and it's not a good thing if you are playing a game that has a set amount of rules and you cannot believe in those rules and you cannot trust those rules because they always in every situation they work differently that's just not fun man it's not fun probably should have done it on the, him because he's got more stress but it had it was 90 percent instead of 100 and knowing my luck he would probably miss and would take damage like he would you know not disarm it and take damage and i would get annoyed and and something so yeah. That trap was not visible. So 8 HP, by the way. Traps, dealing 8 HP. The best traps are in the fucking cove, where they uh, debuff you for like minus 50 or something dodge for 12 or something tens. Those are the best fucking traps. Th that is excellent, excellent game design. You sometimes will not have 12 tens in the whole fucking dungeon, but you will be debuffed for that much. Because the game says so. Those, those are fun, also, like I said. Okay, there's one more... Two more fights, huh? Well, in that case, this may be actually problematic. If they all go fast... That's not gonna be good. A decisive pummeling. A decisive pummeling. I, I like when he says a decisive pummeling, but... And I still don't understand fully how the corp system sometimes works. I know that sometimes, if I kill enemies with, a, with one big blow, their corpses disappear. I know that for a fact that corpses disappear if you crit an enemy. 
if you crit a, a if you crit and kill a enemy with that crit, uh, the corpse will disappear. He will not leave a corpse, right? But sometimes, and it happened already in this in this playthrough a few times. Sometimes enemies will disappear. Their corpses will disappear if I deal a lot of damage with a single hit, not a crit, but a single hit. But I have no idea what is the um, the rule there. Sometimes corpses disappear for no reason. Sometimes I hit for like, you know, enemies have like 12 HP, I hit them for like 15 and their corpses don't disappear, right? Or they have 12 HP, I hit them for 12 with one single attack and their corpses don't disappear. But some, but if I crit them for 12 and they have 12 HP, their corpses will disappear. And some other times I will hit enemies for a lot but not crit and their corpses will disappear. So what's the deal? What's the rule? I don't understand. I really don't. And I would like to understand, but I just don't. It's a fucking mystery for me, really. Good, Death he's dead. I think today, um, in this case, I think today is not gonna be the Necromancer today, by the way. I really was hoping to do ne the Necromancer, but since my soldiers are not... Oh, come on, don't increase my stress. Please, let, let me kill this guy. Um, I think that probably... Today is just gonna be the day where, where I do some um, some dungeons. I'm gonna do probably another dungeon after this one, and I'll postpone the Necromancer for tomorrow or for the next episode at least. No, oh, you you need to do that, don't you? Yeah. Uh, fuck you, fuck you and your fat ass. And frailty finally claim their due. Yeah, if only. I would be able to attack with this guy before this guy attacked. I have more speed, but of course it doesn't fucking matter for this game because RNG is added to every fucking element of this game, right? Even like eight speed versus uh, seven speed. If I would attack first, I would blight him before he increased the stress on this guy and he would not have his he would not be fearful it doesn't matter right now but i'm just showing you how it usually this works right even though it's supposed to be speed is a star that you are supposed to be be important you will never find it that important at least early in the game because they decided for some fucking idiotic reason that they will add a additional rng to speed so even if you have 10 and enemies have zero they still can attack before you i cannot stress out how idiotic that piece of shit stupid mechanic is god that really makes me salty that's one of the most annoying mechanics that they made like i understand that there has to be a amount of variation between you know in in the 10 order because if there was no rng in it added to it you would always have the same turn order and it may be a bit more boring and more predictable but it should be at least a bit predictable and there should never be situations never where i have 10 speed an enemy has zero speed and he goes fast never i did read on forums that supposedly um speed is uh, initiative ten, turn order is determined by a um, D8 roll and I feel that's actually bullshit because I had situations and I already talked about it where I had a minus one enemy minus one speed enemy attack before my uh, character with seven speed right so if if that is true if someone on the like if what I read on the forums is true then a minus one speed enemy skeleton that was a skeleton by the way if a, a minus one speed skeleton should be able to maximum at maximum have seven speed right have seven uh initiative after the the uh, d8 roll plus his speed because minus one plus eight maximum is eight right uh, minus plus minus one is seven right so a character that has more than seven or eight speed 
should always attack before a character with minus one speed, right? Because seven plus uh, the, a minimum roll of one, that's eight, so that's more than seven. Eight is higher than seven, right? That's fucking logical, that's basic math. But what happened last time when I played not on not on camera here, but just while I was playing on the stream a bit uh, to cut some time, I had a situation where a minus one speed enemy attacked before my uh, eight speed character, and I have no explanation to that. Either it's still, it, even it's even more random than it looks like, or there's Breaking some weird shit going on in the game, us. really. Either way, things like that should not happen. There should be a bit of vari like variant between in in the ten order of who attacks when, but there should never be a situation where you stack up a stat and you still go second because stupid RNG is stupid. Like that that should not be a thing. That should never be a thing. RNG should not be the sole determinant of who you know ten order and 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 things like that because that really destroys gameplay. It really makes poor gameplay and it's not a fun feature. Not at all. Okay, we need to get rid of Arabies on you also. So let's do that, I guess. Uh, did we get rid of... Wait, you got three sicknesses, so that kind of sucks. But... Okay, you got this. You got this now. You have... There's a, a lot of sickness going on, by the way. Romanov has the, the Argue, or whatever this is. The Argue. The Argue, yeah, minus 10% damage, minus... T That's a bad sickness. And you have the rabies. Uh, okay, Ro let's cure Romanov. Let's cure Romanov. What can we upgrade more? Can we upgrade? Yes, we can. Okay, great. One more upgrade and we're gonna have two desperate. spots here also. There's so that's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be excellent, excellent. We cannot upgrade this anymore. Yet. We cannot upgrade this, but I can upgrade. Can upgrade the weaponsmith. So I will do that. Flames, bold the metal. We are raising an army. Yeah, we are raising an army. Okay. Oh, and before before I start, let's see. Of course, who did we get? We got us. Uh, Vestal with. Uh, Okay, Bounty Hunter. Oh, finally a Bounty Hunter with minus crit. Uh, okay. Let's take him, I guess, for the now. Of the I like Bounty Hunters, but the that's not a good Bounty payment. Hunter. Cove Explorer, huh? Um, yeah, let's take you for now, for and maybe, maybe we'll may spent, kick you later, but we'll but see. But his eyes hold the secrets of a hundred campaigns. Okay, and let's do another short one. Where do we want to do a shot? Not a long, please. Okay, we're gonna be doing another shot in in the ruins, I guess. We're gonna be farming a lot of ruins today. Yay! Well, shit. What, what can you do? What can you do, eh? Uh, okay, maybe the the beast guy. Let's put you, let's put you, let's put you, and Limic, and let's send, who do we want as a main dude? Uh, I'll get you, I guess. Oh, right. I for I completely forget that they are holy, so they don't want to go. So I guess we need to either send a... Either send our new cove guy, but I think that's actually not a good idea. Let's just send this guy, I think. Yeah, you're gonna be okay. You should be okay, at least. You look that you like you're gonna be okay. What abilities do you have? Uh, you don't have the stun. You Okay, you do have a retribution, so that should be okay. Should be okay.
Okay. Embark. The the only problem with the game, well, the only big problem with the game's uh, like pace overall is that, pace and I already talked about it, that it's, it's grinding. Familiar. You guys see that no. I'm doing so many runs over and over. Yet I only have the the city upgraded to a very low level right now, right? The game really demands a lot of grind from you to get to any acceptable um, upgrade level, which is okay. If like it's it's okay in the sense that you know it, it's a game that you're going to be playing for a long time, but I really would prefer it to be less grindy and and have a bit more stuff to do because really like doing the same it's it's really doing the same thing over and over like to be honest you, you are doing the same thing over and over and over again it's just you are doing them in uh, with different party setups but it's it's still the same thing over and over right I, I would prefer it to be a bit um, them. have a bit more content but then again, I, I guess I should not expect that much. Like you know, it's it's a uh, it is a small indie title, right? It's it's a fun game. It's done well. It could be, of course, done better. But uh, with especially with the RNG that I bitch ab about so much, but it's it's overall done very well. It's very pleasing aesthetically, and, and I do enjoy the the aesthetic part of it. It really is pleasing aesthetically. Um, the only thing that I would I would do is really just decrease the grind. Right now I'm grinding a lot. Well, right now this is only a grind basically and leveling up your soldiers. But the funny thing is that this is actually nothing. Um, you will have to grind a lot more after you get your heroes to level 3 and you will start doing medium dungeons. And I already talked about that. When you start doing medium dungeons... Uh, medium. When you start doing... Um, What's the next level? The next level is called uh, Veteran Dungeons. Yeah, Veteran Dungeons. When you start doing Veteran Dungeons, that's when the actual grind starts. Confidence surges as the because you, crumbles. like I said, uh, like I said in one of the previous episodes, you need to upgrade your whole town Be wary. to max level pride before you start doing Veteran uh, Dungeon runs, right? Because enemy, the the jump in difficulty is just so high that you need basically to have your um, equipment and your skills upgraded as much as you can to even stand a chance Why against the enemies that you will face. And I'm not even talking about uh, champion level, the, the the level five dungeons because that's that's a, you know that's that's basically end game, right? So that's that's understandable. You know? End game should be you know like okay, you have to upgrade everything before you start doing end game, but mid game. It basically doesn't allow you to do the mid game until you upgrade everything, which is a bit, a bit of you know too much if you ask me. Oh, come on, don't dodge, fucker. Okay, you get two, you get two, so I can kill you. No, we actually didn't kill you. Slowly. Gently, this is how a life is taken. Let's increase our stress level. This is not a good composition, by the way, for this this area. Uh, crit for two, <laughs> and you bleed it. Okay. So I actually lost HP instead of gaining it. And of course, look, a enemy with three speed goes before my guy with five. And before my guy with three. Of course. As the fiend because he has to do a bit of damage so so he can chip on me a bit and you know just show me how challenging of a game this is, right? Oh darkest dungeon. You really know how to annoy people. Uh, uh. Anyways, I was talking earlier that I started playing XCOM again, Long War, and I started on classic difficult difficulty. The last time I played XCOM was on brutal difficulty, and I actually feel that brutal difficulty in terms of of actual challenge is the sweet spot for me. 
Um, enemies are tough and challenging, but not too hard for me to deal with. The only problem and, and the only reason why I didn't play on Brutal, but I decided to go on um, on a lower difficulty on Classic, which which is not really that big of a like. The difference between easy, uh, between normal and classic is huge. Normal is quite easy. Classic is much harder. Brutal is a bit harder than classic, and I mean really a bit. It's it's a small. It's like a ten percent upgrade really. in in most cases. It's it's maximum ten percent harder, and then of course it does uh, you know impossible, which is for most people really impossible. But the reason why I started playing on Classic instead of uh, Brutal is the game, like, XCOM is very RNG driven, right? It, it's very run, it's, the, the numbers are just sometimes completely from now nowhere and you get extreme bad RNG and shit like that. And I decided that you again critted him for two. Crit, crit healed him for two. Interesting. And I decided that, you know what, I, I will not get annoyed by bad RNG and I decided to play on a bit lower difficulty I, I am playing Iron Man so in terms of like a challenge it's still gonna be a challenge because you know I'm, I'm basically gonna be uh, not, I'm not gonna be saving between missions so it's, it's not gonna be a walk in the park it, it is gonna be a challenge but the, the thing that always frustrates me and makes me not want to play XCOM anymore and just makes me rage quit is always when I get a huge streak of bad RNG, of bad uh, luck that completely wrecks me or wrecks my my campaign like you know oh you are doing well in a mission and suddenly you have 10 misses in a row and your whole party gets wiped and you because of that you lose like a continent or something which happens the weapon that cuts on its own. So, because of that, I decided to play on Classic. It's still going to be a challenge, it's still going to be fun, it's still going to be... Uh, I'm still going to get salty, but the RNG, you know, bullshit streaks will be a bit fewer, I hope, uh, I believe. And because of that, I think it's going to be a more, more fun experience. Because I know most, most of you guys like seeing me get salty and get annoyed. Especially a lot of you guys that watch me on, on Twitch like me to get like uh, to watch me get salty and, and annoyed and, and just rage quit lifted, but and purpose is made it's gonna be more enjoyable for me and i do enjoy XCOM, and i i also do enjoy uh, darkest dungeon the only problem that i have is when the rng is is fucked up or when certain mechanics especially in darkest dungeon when certain mechanics are clearly set in a way to make the game as obnoxiously difficult and not difficult, obnoxiously um, annoying as it can be, and as uh, and as possible. Basically, it okay. Now let me say it like this because I I had problem uh, saying what I wanted. My biggest problem with Darkest Dungeon is definitely the fact that certain mechanics work in a very weird way that has only one explanation, and that explanation is. Annoying the players, right? Certain mechanics in Darkest Dungeon are done in a way where the, there's no reason for them to be there except for the sole reason of the creators wanting to fuck with us as players, as the players playing the game, and basically giving us the middle finger saying, Oh, you think the game is gonna be easy? Well, here's a mechanic that's gonna fuck you over. So, you know, tell everyone how difficult and challenging this game is, right? But overall, I, I am enjoying Darkest Dungeon, I like this game. The only problem is when, like I said, with mechanics, make the game a bad experience for me. And mechanics don't make sense. Set, like certain mechanics, when sometimes certain mechanics don't make sense, that's, that's the biggest problem that I always have. Hopefully though, hopefully, um, I'm not gonna have that many moments of this. In terms of XCOM, it's, it's kind of similar, but with XCOM, it's more... Certain mechanics are broken, for example, line of sight is terrible in XCOM. It, it really has a big problem a lot of times. Uh, but uh, in XCOM, it's also the, you know, bad streaks of crap happening. In Darkest Dungeon, you don't really care that much if you get a bad roll. It's annoying, but even if you get your whole team wiped, you can hire a new team. In XCOM, it's more complicated than that because if you uh, 
Um, okay. In XCOM it's more complicated because if you get a bad streak and for example you use a whole part you lose a whole party in the end game, well your um, campaign may be over, right? If you lose your A team to a bad streak of, of bad RNG and your A soldiers die, you not only get a huge debuff, a huge uh, you know a penalty for that with uh, you not getting money, uh, getting increased stress and panic level in, in a continent, stuff like that. But you also get the un un fun uh, experience of having to re-level rookies into high level characters again. And in XCOM, especially Long War, in later parts of the campaign, if you lose soldiers, you're not gonna be able to re-level them, re-level new ones that easily, right? Success in so in Long War, actually, the beautiful. biggest problem is always or to find a good a spot between having a, you know, leveling up your uh, A teams, like A and B team to uh, Master Sergeant level, to and, and keeping a reasonable roster of, of uh, characters that are not rookies anymore, right? You, you have to keep leveling up rookies in, um, in XCOM or you will fail because you will not have enough soldiers. So a wipe in Long War is in much, time, much more will know uh, the damaging to you and your campaign than a wipe in, in Darkest Dungeon. I, I, in Darkest Dungeon it only takes me time to recover. If I even have a level, if I even have a party of level 6 characters and they die, it doesn't matter. I will be able, it's gonna only annoy me because it's gonna take time to level a new party to level 6 because it doesn't cost you. You cannot lose. The city cannot get destroyed. You cannot fail the mission. You cannot fail the game. There's no... There is a permadeath system, but there's no you fail state in the game uh, where you cannot continue, you cannot go to the game anymore, right? In XCOM, it's different. In XCOM, if you have a bad wipe or two, you may fail because you will not be able to have rookies fighting, you know, elite mutants in later stages of the game, right? Or even mutants. If you don't, if you get your best guys killed and you don't have replacements, and you usually don't have that many replacements, you cannot just hire rookies to replace them because they, because of the skill system and everything else, you're gonna have rookies fighting elite mutants and elite float, you know, elite mutants and heavy floaters, and they will die because equipment is nothing uh, without skills that soldiers have. So it's it's completely different in that sense. The only similar thing really is the bad RNG and the annoying mechanics sometimes. Sometimes the annoying mechanics are... Oh, my favorite fucking thing, right? Oh, should I take this guy? He doesn't even have a abysmal uh, artillery. I don't think so. Grave Robber, uh, you also don't have anything. I already have, I think, two Houndmasters. Okay, so let's let's just see for the next run. We'll be doing this, right? Yeah, oh, a very nice reward actually, a tough ring. Plus 10% per protection, plus 15 max HP, minus 15 damage, plus 10% uh, stress damage. So, you lose damage, but you gain protection and max HP. So for a tank, it's a acceptable item. This, in earlier versions of the game, um, in, in early access, was much, much like, more powerful than it is right now. Because it didn't have the minus percent damage. It had like a minus accuracy or minus dodge or something like that, if I remember correctly. But it didn't have the minus 15% damage, so it was even more powerful. Right now, it's like, okay for a tank, but you're not going to be doing any, any damage dealing with, with the tank, right? But uh, in, in earlier versions, it was it was just obnoxiously broken, obnoxiously broken. Can we upgrade anything more? Can we? Um, no, we can't. Can we upgrade something here? No, we can't. Right? Yeah, we need ten, and we cannot also upgrade here. We need eleven. 
Okay, guys. So next episode, like I said, I'm gonna be doing the um, the necromancer, the next boss. I really wanted to do it today, but my soldiers were just not. My guys were, were not prepared for that. But now that we have her healed and we have Romanov healed and everyone else is doing well, um, we'll be we'll be sending them. I will be taking a plague doctor. I still don't know if I'm gonna be taking Romanov again for another boss fight or if I'll, I'll take maybe this guy. Um, Turnebat? Turnebat, I guess. Turnebat. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna be taking uh, Romanov or Turnebat. Maybe Turnebat because he's lower level, so he needs experience actually. Um, and probably one of these guys. And we're gonna be killing the boss. Hopefully, it's gonna go as well as the Swine Prince. The Necromancer, like I said, is not really that hard if you have a good, good party and you, you bleed him or blight him. So, hopefully, that's gonna go well. Anyways. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this episode, if you did you can leave a like and a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next episode where we'll be killing the necromancer boss, so see you next time guys, thanks for watching.